I definitely see a future uh, wherein Muslims and Dalits should come together socially and politically. That is the need of the hour. You know, those days of, 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 of sweet talk, uh, wearing a skull cap or not wearing a skull cap, holding an iftar party, or sending some chadar to Khaja Gharib Nawaz Ajmer, or, you know, uh, uh, embracing a Muslim leader or giving him something like that, it's not going to work. Because in this day and age, I have aspirations. I want to, you know, I want uh, to develop, I want to progress in life. So these are the issues that needs to be addressed. So secularism, you know, but maybe I am the only communal politician in India now. So everyone is secular. some time to decide, uh, you know, it was in the air that you would contest but you kept saying that we haven't decided yet, we haven't decided yet. You took some time to uh, decide that and um, even before you took that decision, there were constantly, there was chatter that you would uh, end up benefiting BJP. Was that one of the considerations when you took that decision? No, this is a completely wrong argument and wrong allegation to be made against me because I didn't contest in, in Delhi. Uh, still Congress was wiped out. I didn't contest in Jharkhand, Jammu Kashmir, Haryana, Congress lost. So this argument is completely wrong. I mean, I contested only two parliament seats. Uh, the BJP could win 280 parliament seats. So this is completely wrong argument. So that was not weighing down on us, you know. It was never a No, no. Not at all. What, what were the things that you decide? No, the thing was, uh, the first time you're contesting in Bihar and uh, uh, so we first took a decision that we will contest in Simanchal and the reason Simanchal because the Purnia division in Bihar is the most backward region and uh, the empirical data is very clear. So we thought that uh, you know we should focus on Simanchal, on the upliftment of Simanchal, development of Simanchal and we also said that on the lines of what uh, in Karnataka, you have this Hyderabad, uh, Hyderabad, Karnataka Region 371 Regional Development Council that needs to be formed. So we just took that decision. There are many, you know, uh, who say that uh, uh, you are entering to Bihar is a vote uh, division tactic on your part. What do you? What is your response to them? No, no. See, my response to them is I I have this NSSO data 64 to 72 round. Now this cannot lie. You know, I, you know, you can uh, add uh, different meanings to my contest or not contesting elections. But this clearly shows that uh, in the last 10 years or whatever, uh, the, the economic or the education, uh, economic index, education index, material well-being, health index is pathetic as far as Muslims and Dalits are concerned. And if you compare this with the four districts of Simanchal, the, the four districts are much worse. You know, and, and then you compare Simanchal with the district of, of the Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, it is way ahead. So why such disparity is there? And the second thing is that the argument that is given is that no, uh, if you contest it will help BJP. Out of 24 seats in Simanchal, 13, BJP has already won. 13 MLAs are from BJP and 5 are from JDU. The third point is that another argument is given that, uh, oh no, no, wherever Muslims are in large numbers, BJP has won. My, uh, my question is, so where is the polarization happening? The polarization is happening the other way around. It is, it is not within the Muslim community. And if that was the case, why is BJP winning then? So this is completely wrong argument and, and this data itself is like a mirror to such people who claim that uh, uh, you know great uh, development has been done in 10 years no nothing has happened things have gone bad uh, from, from uh, you know from worse to bad you know, this is this is it the more i read such data the more uh, questions arise in my mind so uh, it is completely wrong wrong uh, allegations to make against me do you believe that uh, Muslims and Dalits can be natural allies and do you see a future in, in your alliance? I mean, can you have an alliance with say a party like the BSP? I definitely see a future uh, wherein Muslims and Dalits should come together socially and politically. That is the need of the hour because as far as 
uh, their issues, their concerns, their problems, exploitation, the concern, it is, it is very much the same. And uh, that is what, you know, my great intention or my great dream is that Muslim and Dalit should come together. About your second part, uh, I don't know, it is too early to answer that question. You say that your main thing is sort of being anti-BJP. Now, in every state, there are regional forces. In UP, there's SP. In, you know, there's left in Bengal, uh, Lalu in Bihar, who are strongly defined as representing the Muslim interests. They may not do it well, but you know, they are they've been committed to that. So. What is different about your politics of representation? What do you tell them, your voters, that they don't say or that they cannot say? What do you tell the Muslim voter and what do you tell the Hindu voter? No, I I tell them, uh, I I show them, I come, I, you know, I, I make them uh, understand about. Uh, the kind of injustice which has happened in this, uh, in the rule of these uh, parties. Today, newspapers have carried a report about the commission report of Muzaffar Nagar. Now, that commission report says that the ruling party itself is involved, which uprooted 50,000 Muslims uh, from one place, I mean, completely destroying their way of life. Despite being in power, despite having 60 odd Muslim MLAs and, and none couldn't stop it. The promises that they had made, you know, they have not delivered on it. For the first time in India's history, independent history, that you don't have a single Muslim MP coming elected from Uttar Pradesh. But you have one, uh, five members of one Yadava family from one party getting elected. <coughs> Uh, you have uh, 15 years of Lalu rule, but development on ground or Mr. Mr. Nitish rule, this, this data which is there, where you have 42 percent illiteracy rate in Bihar. So these are the real issues and un unfortunately it is these political parties are not understanding the issues which, which the Muslim youth in particular wants them to be addressed. You know, those days of, 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 of sweet talk, uh, wearing a skull cap or not wearing a skull cap, holding an iftar party or sending some chadar to Khaja Gharib Nawaz Ajmer or, you know, uh, uh, embracing a Muslim leader or giving him something like that. It's not going to work because in this day and age, I have aspirations. I want to, you know, I want uh, to develop. I want to progress in life. So these are the issues that needs to be addressed, including the security issue. Minorities are facing a threat in this country under this president. Well, uh, I, uh, as far as I know, I have great, uh, you know, uh, the constitution is very clear. You cannot threaten anyone in India. There's a rule, there should be rule of law. But uh, the last 15 months, the statements that have been emanating uh, from the ruling party and the latest statement uh, by the cultural minister about uh, Muslim that Kalam, despite being a Muslim, was a nationalist. It speaks volumes about, uh, uh, about uh, the mindset and the approach of this government. And today's Prime Minister's speech about uh, in, in that uh, his welcome was given in, in, in Sanskrit. He says if this was done in India, it was a secular issue. When how is uh, reciting slokas in secularism a secular issue? not giving reservations to backward communities in India, uh, in Maharashtra, despite Bombay High Court giving reservation, is a, secu is a secular issue. Saying Quran and, and Bible are not Atma of this nation is a secular issue. You know, when the Prime Minister stood up in Parliament in his first speech and said that uh, we got this power af after Bara so Saal ki Ulami, that is a secular issue. We carried a series of stories from Bihar saying that riots are going up there. Uh, do you see something similar to the phenomenon happening in Bihar as well? No, see your report of, uh, of, of uh, an Indian Express 
this in itself clearly shows the governance which which, which uh, the ruling party was practicing how can you allow so many incidents to happen one two you put put an end to it and this shows that what is your governance in last 10 years and of course there are forces who want to uh, but uh, to polarize and the rss and the sang parivar have have mastered this art of having a localized conflict and controlling it there then in there and then so that it spreads it doesn't spreads everywhere but the effect is there in, in terms of polarization so what was mr nitish kumar's government doing why didn't they control it when so many incidents have happened and the, if if you read express report it is very similar not different you know, this issue that happened that happened but so this is clearly shows how how governance was there and do you think nitish is secular well you see if you if you follow the path of nitish uh, 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 politics when bhagalpur riot happened it was jagannath mishra who said in the parliament uh, uh, he quoted the speech of nitish in lok sabha wherein nitish said that it is the ansari and the sultans who who are responsible for bhagalpur riots if you follow the, uh, the political uh, 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 path of mr nitish kumar he formed samta party Mr. Shahabuddin joined him, CPM and Alliance. They lost badly. Then they joined BJP. That was a turning point wherein BJP started going in, growing in Bihar. So when Godra happened, he was the railway minister, and he contested uh, the 2009 uh, nine elections, five elections with BJP. So as far as I am concerned, I don't see any difference between uh, Narendra Modi or Advani or RSS or BJP. For me, they are the same. They are all ideological creatures. and take the recent example of bhagalpur rights commission report 2005 he came in power it took him 10 years for a commission report to be given and what does the commission report say nothing it, nothing comes out of it so secularism you know but maybe i am the only communal politician in india now <laughs> everyone is secular